Hello everyone, and welcome to Hill Street. Today's story is Ned's Diner by Casey Were Alien. If you end up enjoying this story, please leave a like. And if you enjoy hearing stories from me, please subscribe and become a resident of Hill Street and let me know how I'm doing in the comments. Now, let's get to this nightmare. The bell on the door dinged softly as I pushed my way into the diner. The silence was overwhelming as I surveyed the dining room. I fiddled with the keys in my hand. I had frequented the diner with my dad as a young kid. Its mint vinyl seats and pink tabletops were like a window into the 60s. We used to sit at the counter and order old-fashioned malts, and the elderly owner, Ned, always served them with a smile on his face. He often handled the cooking, while his wife was usually the only waitress there. Every summer, their niece would come out to visit and would help with bussing tables. The diner was famous for its notoriously delicious burgers and malts. There wasn't a place in the Tri-County area that had a reputation like they did. The diner had been in their family for as long as anyone in town could remember. Ned's grandfather had started it, and it was passed down to Ned's dad, and finally, to Ned. It was never extremely busy, but it had just enough customers to stay afloat and allow Ned and his wife to build a small nest egg. They never had children of their own, so the townspeople naturally assumed the diner would be passed on to his niece. We were all in shock when one Friday, the diner failed to open. We wondered to ourselves if Ned and his wife had gotten sick and couldn't open that day. It had happened in the past, but even when they were violently ill, they would stop by and leave a note on the door. Days passed with no sign of the couple and the worry in town grew. The police checked the diner and their home, but both were vacant. Time drug on, and slowly the town stopped waiting for the diner to open. Rumors spread. Some said the couple left to live with relatives. Others said they had taken a trip out of town and had died in an accident. Nobody knew for sure, but we all wondered. Eventually the town stopped wondering and the diner stood empty. Just another casualty of small town life. That was until a few weeks ago. A young couple moved in down the road from the diner and on their walks they would pass by and peek in the windows. They started asking questions and learned it had been abandoned. I will never cease to be amazed by the tenacity of youth. And all these years, we had watched the diner decay. Its parking lot had begun to crumble and the sign hung crooked from its post. All the while, we never questioned its existence or what it could be. This young couple had done some research Apparently, when a property sits vacant long enough, you can go through a process where you pay the back taxes, and after waiting so long to see if the owner of the property will pay you back, you can actually take ownership of the abandoned property. After only a few months living here in town, the young couple had the deed to the property and had new locks placed. They were totally set on reopening the diner and making it a renewed staple here in town. They started remodeling the kitchen first, cleaning the grease, replacing tiles, just generally bringing everything up to code. 
They told me that they wanted to keep the diner's vintage charm while breathing new life into it. They were explaining their plans and expectations as I had unlocked the door and walked in. They waited anxiously as I walked towards the back where the kitchen was. I ran my gloved hands along the countertop. It was coated with a thick film of dust and debris from the ceiling tiles. As I reached the kitchen door, I turned and looked at the stools my dad and I used to frequent. He would be rolling in his grave if he knew I was back here or even why I was back. The couple was tearing apart the walk-in freezer when they found them. They had started pulling one of the walls down when they discovered a secret room. There, in the hidden alcove, sat Ned. He was slumped over in a wooden chair. His body was partially mummified and resting across a flimsy and dingy card table. On the table sat a meat grinder, and in his hand was a leg. Right now, we are assuming it belongs to his wife, but we are still waiting on the DNA test to confirm it. I finished taking photos of the scene and was waving the medical examiner's team in when I spotted it. Sitting under the cash register, a small red journal was like a beacon in the darkness around me. I silenced my radio and flipped through it while waiting for more squad cars to arrive. The last entry was more than 20 years ago. Ned's shaking handwriting echoed the distress he must have felt. The economy wasn't doing well at the time, and the diner's business had slowed more than they could have ever anticipated. On top of it, Ned had been struggling with shortness of breath and chest pains. Money was so tight, he felt like he couldn't even dream of seeking out a doctor. It was so tight, in fact, he couldn't even afford ground beef for the burgers. He had always handled the finances, and his wife had no idea what dire straits they were in. She also had no idea that Ned was taking stray cats from behind the diner to help supplement the meat he couldn't afford to buy. That was until she walked into the freezer one day and saw the hidden door open for the first time. She found him hunched over a table shoving a young kitten into the grinder. She turned to run, and as she did, she managed to slip on some ice on the freezer floor, cracking her head on the built-in shelving. In the journal, Ned said he could tell she was dead. There was just too much blood, and her eyes were far too dull. Just as he started thinking about calling the police, a group of teens walked into the diner. Upon hearing the bell on the door ring, he ran out to the counter and took their orders. Not knowing what else to do and not wanting his secret to be uncovered. Unfortunately, they all ordered burgers. Fortunately for him, he had an idea. He loved his wife. He loved her so much, and she loved the diner. It's not like he could afford her funeral anyway. So he went to his horrific hideaway and started cutting the fatty parts away from her body and ground them up to feed the teens. He felt like she would have done anything to save the diner, that she would have understood him. The last paragraph of the journal explained that he was planning on closing up early that day so that he could finish grinding and prepping the meat. Right now, we are running with the theory he had been having symptoms for a while, and we think that the stress of his wife's death 
may have been the tipping point for a major cardiac event. The whole town is shocked, not just at the loss for the elderly couple for the second time, but more so at the idea that my graduating class may have inadvertently participated in cannibalism. I guess some small town mysteries are just better left unsolved. <laughs>